In this video we're going to take a look at the basic operation and button layout on the BR1600. In the center of the unit we've got the main LCD screen. You can access the menu from the utility button and you can navigate using the cursor keys or you can also use the function keys which are located below the screen. These line up with particular options on different pages of the screen so for instance if you wanted to go into the song uh, section of the menu you can either use the cursor key to highlight it and then press enter or you can also use the F2 key which is the one that lines up with that option to go directly. You'll also notice there's a small arrow here that indicates that there are pages either side you can use either the scroll keys or you can just scroll through manually with the cursor keys. If you need to get back to the home screen, continually pressing the exit key will get you back. You can adjust the contrast of the LCD from this menu. If you press LCD and then use the time value wheel, you can make it lighter or darker. There's also a shortcut using buttons. If you hold the utility button and turn the time value wheel, you also get the adjustment of the contrast. On certain menu items, you'll see there's a scroll bar to the right. If you want to scroll down the page, you just use the cursor keys and that will scroll through all the options. You can use the time value dial to change any of the options that you're highlighting. On the top is your controls for input volume of whatever you've got connected to the BR1600. You can have up to eight inputs record at one time. We have a peak light here and if that lights up that indicates that the level of the input signal is minus six decibels. This area here is where you select the input source. So we have guitar and bass which is a mono signal, vocal, again mono, press them both at the same time, to record them simultaneously, so you have the guitar or bass going to one track and the vocal going to a second. Multi-track is where you can record up to eight inputs all at the same time and stereo track records up to eight inputs at the same time but they are mixed down to a stereo pair. Once you've set the input level, you set the recording level here. Next to that we have a guitar tuner. This is where you set the recording mode of the BR1600. Input mode is the standard mode for recording sources directly to the tracks. Bounce mode is for combining recorded tracks and effects and also live if you choose to either one or two tracks and mastering is where you take a stereo mix of your song and then run it through a set of mastering presets in the mastering toolkit. The effects button takes you to the effects screen where you can control which of the effects you have on the tracks. When you select an input source the effects are turned on automatically and they select an appropriate band for instance the guitar source selects guitar effects if you press the vocal then it selects a vocal bank of effects multi-track will select eight compressors EQs and low pass filters and the stereo gives us effects from the stereo banks by default the effects are recorded to the track but you can turn those off there is also an option to record the tracks dry and just monitor the effects. This section is where you set and navigate markers. Markers are points that you can set anywhere in your song so that you can get to them easily. You set a marker by pressing the mark button either in play or stop mode and if you want to delete a marker you use the clear button. You can navigate the markers using either the forward and backward search buttons here or you can use the cursor and time value dial. The marker name appears here on the screen and the marker number is here. So if you want to navigate with the cursor you highlight under the marker number 
and then use the dial to choose the particular marker you want. You can have up to 100 markers in a song and they are numbered sequentially from the first marker through to 100. You can edit the marker's name and fine tune the location from the menu in the marker section here. You just scroll to the marker you want to edit and then use the cursor keys and value dial to change it. This section controls the punch in and punch out points if you're overdubbing. You navigate to the point at which you want to punch in and press the in in which case it'll light up. You then navigate to the point where you want to punch out, press the out button, and then to engage it, you press the on off button. If you want to delete either one of the points, you hold the delete key and press it at the same time. The transport section is laid out similar to a standard cassette. You have the stop, play, record, rewind and forward. The zero button takes you back to the start of the song. There's also a shortcut for finding the first section of audio recorded. Holding the stop key and pressing rewind will take you to the start of the first piece of audio recorded. Holding stop and forward will take you to the end of the last section of audio in your song. The repeat button allows you to set start and end points so that you can loop a section of audio. You just press it once to set the start, second time to complete the loop, and then press play. If you want to turn it off, you just press it a third time. The BR1600 has 16 tracks, 8 of which are mono and 4 stereo pairs. As well as that, each track has 16 virtual tracks. Only one V-Track can play at one time, but you can use all of the other V-Tracks to store additional audio. The Track Type button allows you to select what type of track you want on the last three stereo sets of channels. When you create a new song, you have the option to select it then, but it can be changed at any time. If you press the Select button, it'll take you to the page which shows you the choices you have. Track 11 and 12 can be either set to audio tracks or loop phrases. Track 13 and 14 can either be audio or bass. And track 15 and 16 can be set to either drums, metronome or audio. The rhythm buttons control how the built-in rhythm guide works. You can either have it set in pattern mode in which a single pattern is played continuously or in arrangement mode where the patterns are strung together to form a song in terms of intro, verse, chorus, bridge etc. The track arm buttons indicate which of the tracks are going to be recorded to. A flashing red light indicates that that's the track that will be armed. If you want a stereo track to record you hold the two together. Two flashing lights indicate a stereo track. If you're recording with the multi-track, you can have up to eight recording at one time, either eight mono tracks or four stereo tracks. The track mute button allows you to mute the audio on any of the tracks. You simply hold down the mute button and then press the corresponding track you want to mute. And then if it's flashing green, it's muted. Now this doesn't work on anything other than audio so your loop phrases your bass track or your drums can't be muted if they are not set to audio the tap button allows you to manually tap in the tempo of a song you just have to tap it four times and then the tempo of the song will change to match what you're tapping in the channel edit section is where you control the pan compression and EQ for the tracks Pan gives you pan controls for all 16 tracks. You have eight compressors that you can use either on the eight mono tracks or you can switch to control the four stereo tracks. You have three band parametric EQ on all 16 tracks. The loop effects control reverb, chorus, delay and doubling. Reverb can be applied to all 16 tracks 
and at the same time you can also add either chorus, delay or doubling, only one at any one time. The loop effects are not recorded to tracks, they're only recorded when you bounce or master the song. These buttons are a special type of insert effect that work on playback only. The vocal toolbox allows you to do pitch correction on a vocal track or you can use it to create harmonies. The mastering toolkit allows you to master a stereo mix of your song using preset effects. The speaker modeling button allows you to audition your song in alternative monitor environments. It simulates different speaker types and is designed to use monitors with a digital output. The CD buttons allow you to control the onboard CD burner. You can listen to or record to CD. You can save or load data and audio. And you can import audio to use as loop phrases. In terms of connection, the BR1600 has two headphone jacks with independent volumes at the front. Hi Z guitar input at the front. On the rear we've got eight balanced XLR inputs with phantom power, eight quarter inch unbalanced jacks. The stereo pair of RCA outs are for connecting powered monitors. There is a socket for a foot switch and an expression pedal so you can use the foot switch for stopping, starting, recording and you can also use it for punching in and punching out. The expression pedal you can use for volume and wire effects. The digital in and out is via coaxial cable and can connect a pair of monitors if they support it or to a PC for exporting audio or you can also use it to connect two BR1600s together as master and slave. There's a USB connection, however it's only USB 1, so it is very slow. There's a MIDI in and MIDI out, which you can use for syncing with external equipment. The BR can also be set to master or slave, so it can either control or be controlled. So that was a quick overview and look at the buttons and functions on the BR1600. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please leave a comment and I'll see you in the next video.